Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for this video. It's a Sunday morning now and I know I've been kind of a little lax on videos lately. Just been kind of doing the whole summer thing. As most of you know, summer gets pretty busy for most people. And So first off, for most of the country, it's been extremely warm. We had near record temperatures here the last few days or so. It got to about 108 as far as the heat index goes. So again, I have cool season grass as you know. It's pretty tough on things. Luckily though, we've been having a lot of rain. Well, not necessarily luckily because I'm gonna show you some things here in just a second to do with the rain. But last night, our creek behind our house flooded because we had basically a flash flood. And then overall, most of where I live here in central Iowa has been having a lot of flooding problems because we've just been getting consistent rain over and over again. The ground is all saturated and it just can't handle anymore. So when I'm walking through parts of my yard right now, you just hear kind of squishy ground and I'm trying to stay off of it as much as I can, but I need to actually keep mowing and that's been a problem as well. So this wheelbarrow here had no water in it last night before it rained and that's how much is in there. Uh, so. If I can give you a little example here. So out here in my fence line area is where it really gets the wettest just because that's our lowest spot of the ground. So down here is extremely squishy and just way too much rain down in the ground. So here's the remnants basically of uh, last night's flooding. You can kind of see everything was laying over because most of this was all covered with water last night. Got some debris on the ground, sticks and stuff like that. And then here's my rain gauge. This thing holds 11 inches of rain. And as you can see, it looks like it's not quite halfway full. So there's probably about five inches of rain in there. So that's not very good. Right here you can kind of see the debris trail of where the water was at. So looking up this whole way here, you'll be able to tell kind of where it was, but down on this end I'll walk over there and show you how high it was. So here's kind of what's left of what was over here, but remember if you saw that little clip at the beginning, it was somewhere up here near the fence. So. so the issue that I've been having with the grass then is that really three and a half inches for my bluegrass is just a little bit too tall for it, and I tried to push it this year that area back behind the fence there where all that rain was. I was at four inches up until probably about two weeks ago and things just started to get really bad as far as the look back there of grass laying over. My mower tires go over the lawn and I try not to go in the same directions at all so I've been trying to do different patterns every single time but even crossing the lawn, doing different things wherever the tires are, just laying the grass over and the mower will not pick it up because of all that wet weather that we've been having too. So when the grass is that wet, it likes to kind of lay over on itself anyway when you walk on it. So it's just been a problem for me to keep it at that, at that height. So I went down to three and a half inches on that area behind the fence. It does not look very good. It's kind of stressed it out a little bit. But I'm gonna have to go a little bit lower here before all is said and done and we're getting into the hottest part of the year. So lesson learned this year, there's a few different things that I tried out that I wouldn't do again. And one of them would be that is just, I'm go, I went too tall with my specific type of bluegrass. Now again, I've mentioned in different videos before that it's great to mow your lawn tall, but you have to actually look at your specific grass and see what's happening. So just because you want to set your mower at the highest height it will go or close to it, doesn't mean exactly that it's always going to work out. Last year, I had it at three inches. I didn't seem to have much of an issue there. So I thought, oh, I'll just go a little bit higher this year and it won't be a problem. But I'm finding out that it's not the greatest thing right now, especially with wet weather and having to mow so often, you're putting a lot of tracks in the yard with your mower and that's just kind of what's happening. So I wanted to explain that a little bit. So I know I posted a photo on Instagram of what was going on. I got a lot of comments from people saying they were having the same issues this year. So I don't think it's just me. And again, that's kind of what lawn care is about. You just kind of have to experiment with things, learn your lessons, and then take note of them so that you don't do that again. Front yard, I still have a lot, a lot of nut sedge in there, and I haven't had a chance to spray that because of all the weather going on. It's pretty much raining every single day, so that's going to be something that I tackle here very soon. 
I need to try to get a handle on some of this nut sedge. So I bought some sedge hammer. That's when I'm gonna try out what most people recommended first to see how that works out and hopefully it goes well. So with all this rain as well, I haven't had to water any parts of my yard. Obviously we've had plenty. And so the low mow areas are looking pretty good too, even though we've had some really hot weather. All right, so you may have heard that there was a little bit of a malorganite shortage. I think they're starting to catch up a little bit, but this past week I was able to get some bags back there, which you can see out at the good old fleet farm. So that was also a good deal again, five for 30 bucks. So if you have a fleet farm around you, I definitely think you should check that out for Malorganite. Not only is it a great price, but also they normally have things in stock. They had a whole pallet of it when I was there. So that's a really good deal. And I'm gonna be putting this down on my front yard still. Have made a decision on my backyard. Don't really know if I need much more nitrogen in terms of how much heat is supposed to be coming yet. So I probably will just start to go to iron uh, alone on the backyard, which I'll explain in another video as well, but probably on the front yard, I'm gonna go with one more app of Melorganite here for the 4th of July. The other thing that I need to do today is I wanted to mow with the Swordman, but I have the 10 blade reel in right now. And if you can see this, you can see there's not much distance here in between the reel. So that's good for lower cuts because you're gonna have a much lower grass height going in between here. So that's really what these 10 reels are for, is a much lower cut. So what happens when you're going to a little bit higher cut then, is that there's not enough space in here, and if it's a longer grass blade, not as much can fit in here, and it's cutting and cutting and cutting, so you actually want a little bit more space, which is where a five or six blade reel comes in, especially when you're cutting at a little bit higher height like I am. So I'm gonna switch back to the six blade today, and I don't think I've showed you exactly how this system works in terms of taking these out, so I will do that right now. First thing we start with is just this little plate here, and all this is is a magnetic cover. It goes over uh, the belt system, so it's kind of a neat little feature, but just go like that, and that thing comes right off. Then you have all your belts over here, your drive belt and the belt that's turning the reel. Okay, so then this belt right here, this is the end of the reel right here, and this is the belt, so we just need to remove this, and it'll be a little bit tight to get it off there, but there's this little kind of guiding piece right here. Just take that off there. Take that off like that. And the belt is removed. All right, now I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this, but there's just a little screw that goes in right here. So we got the little tool that came with it. We're just gonna loosen that up. Make sure you don't lose this put that back in the reel when we take it out. And then there's gonna be the exact same thing on this side right here. So we're just gonna loosen that up. And now basically this whole reel, you can just grab this little handle that's here on top. Right, so then I got the six blade reel over here. While it's out, I'm just gonna make sure that it cuts paper perfectly. So I will do that just to make sure that it's cutting paper. That means that we will be cutting the grass cleanly as well. And while it's out of there, it's a lot easier to check than while it's on the mower. From here, it's pretty simple. Again, we're gonna take the screws out of this reel here on the end. Remember not to lose these little bad boys. Okay, those are out now, so we should be able to just lift this thing in here. Just kinda gotta work with it until it gets into position, there we go. Okay, so we got that side, then you just put this screw back in. Okay, same exact thing I'm gonna do on the other side. Okay, so both of these screws are put back in on both sides, this side and that other side. That just holds the reel in place. Very easy system. And then we wanna put this belt back on, so what you need to do is get it underneath this thing here. You need to put it back on this pulley first, get it underneath there, and then kinda of stretch it back on to this one. That's all there is to it. We put the magnetic cover back on and good to go. So that feature right there I think is really one of the coolest ones of the Swordsman. It's just that you can change the cartridges out 
Uh, I have a dethatching cartridge that I'll be using this fall. You can get brooms to help you level sand in. You can get verticutters. There's, there's just so many cool things that you can do with that mower. So that'll pretty much do it for me today, but I have a plenty more coming up very soon. Also, I will be revealing my decision on what I'm gonna be doing this fall for my yard and renovation or, and all that whole plan. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching this one. We'll see you next time. <laughs>